going to continue the activities of the Legal Amazon Consortium, the Interstate Consortium for the, uh, the, the, the Sustainability of the Amazon. We are in the ninth panel right now, and we are going to discuss the fundamentals for a green economy and a low carbon agriculture. So we have this permanent challenge in Brazil to conciliate the Brazilian agribusiness with sustainability. And everyone who are here discussing this topic are looking for the necessary solution so that we can build this development process in, a, in an integrated way. To come to the panel, we are going to invite the Secretary Eduardo Tavares. He is the Secretary of Planning in the state of uh, Amapá. He's going to, pre to present, to represent Antonio Valdez Cois, who is the governor of the state. We invite Kleber Soares, who is the Secretary for Innovation, Sustainable, Sustainable Development and Irrigation in, in, in his state, Daniele de Ben Luiz, who is head of Embrapa Fisheries and Aquaculture. She's representing Embrapa in the Amazon. We invite Liege Correa, Sustainability Director of Friboi JBS. And we also invite Bruno Connor, who is the president of the Land, the Land Institute in Pará. Let's put the women in the center because they are more important than you, okay? Let's re recover the five minutes we lost in our delay. We have this challenge as we just commented. Can you, can you hear me? We have this challenge to find solutions. The objective of this panel is to identify the possible solutions for the challenge. We know what the challenge is. We know what the problem is. But what are the solutions? that we can present in a structured way to bring this development of agribusiness in a sustainable way for the Amazon and Brazil. We know that the Amazon has a paramount role in this process of development and this connection of, with the global market. I usually say that Brazil has two pieces in this global chess. Uh, one is agribusiness and and the commodities and mining, and the other is nature, is the forest. So how do we integrate both, both pieces? So I'd like you to start by uh, representing the uh, governor, Antonio Valdez, about this challenge and about the program that we are building within the consortium. Please, uh, Secretary Eduardo Correas. I'd like to thank the opportunity on behalf of Governor Antonio Valdez. I'd like to thank you all, and I'd like to greet all authorities and members of the panel, our moderator, Eugenio, who is a great partner with IPAM. And it's a program that has been built with this partnership and network. So we are going to present data in general. I don't know if we have the clicker. I'm going to approach in a brief way so that we can focus on what we need to discuss with the great names we have with us today. But basically, we've been discussing since the beginning with Sudan, with Suprema, with MAPA and the idealization of this North Plan, this more sustainable North Plan, 
So we have the strategic planning and the green recovery plan from the consort from the legal Amazon consortium. And since then, Embrapa from Amapá is older than the state because it's 40 years old and Amapá only has to, it only is only 30 years old. So speaking about bioeconomy and low carbon agriculture was one of the great guidance for us when we started to talk about the Legal Amazon Consortium. The name of the consortium is communicating, is for sustainable development. The name of the of this special author kit that was um, was built according to the legal order in Brazil is communicating this seek for low carbon economy for this uh, green biome that is interesting for the for our national government and for the international bodies as well. So within the, the consortium, the legal Amazon consortium too, um, great programs were the priorities. When we talk about uh, the first one, we are talking about the prevention and control to deforestation and fires. We have different partnerships uh, with different bodies, but we, the state government has a decisive uh, role with all the governance concerning that. And in the part of uh, bioeconomy, this low carbon bio, uh, bioeconomy, we have MAP and we have different bodies also performing an important work. You may leave the clicker with me if you wish. For us to approach in a object in, a, in an objective way this process from this moment on and from the incorporation of the long term plans and with this discussion on planning besides integrating that in the national strategies for the biome and that's why i wanted to mention and recognize the work we've been doing with mapa so since car and different programs, we've integrated a lot and we started to map the different synergies. So we firstly identified that we had been doing a lot, but somehow that wasn't seen. We were working case by case. So how could we create a synergy between the different policies? in such a way that we can generate income, we can influence the GDP. We have a population that almost half of that is below the poverty line. So we have great opportunities. So how can, can we transform the different bottlenecks and different challenges into opportunities for the Amazon? This is the right slide. The previous, the previous one, please. I'd like to highlight that we have almost 30 million inhabitants, 60% of the territory in Brazil, and 9% of the Brazilian GDP. So where we see uh, fragilities, we also see great opportunities because Brazil is a great provider of food for the world and we are then able to, to find this new market to insert the Amazon. Within this strategy of providing food, we have this low carbon agriculture for the planet and these are the, the goals. We must enhance the participation of the Amazon in this uh, food basket of national products. For you to have an idea, we've participated with 0.17%. If we increase to 1.3%, that is something feasible within five years, 
with uh, all the bodies, all the municipal governments, with IPA, with the articulation, with the Devel European Development Bank, and with the embassy of the uh, European Union, and also we've been discussing with with the foreign. Uh, the Foreign Affairs Affairs Department, we could generate $2.3 billion per year. And this is feasible. We've been working with Embrapa in different workshops, and we know that this is possible. I'm not going to give spoilers because we're going to launch this program on Monday with WRI. They are uh, an international reference. They have fantastic studies on what bioeconomy is. The concept of bioeconomy is very important, not only for us to understand how we can work with public budgets and with the structuring of public policies for bioeconomy, and also to raise funds. And we've identified that during 2020, 2021. Sometimes we call the plan ABC as bioeconomy, agroforest system as bioeconomy. So there was a great mix and we've identified that in the, in the different state budgets. So last year, the governors committed to put in this program a hundred million for 2022, and that that goal was achieved, more than achieved. I'm going to talk about the MAPA. The minimum was 12 million for each state. Just for this area of biodiversity and bioeconomy, low economy, low carbon economy and agriculture, 12, 12 million, and we had more than this investment this year and the other states as well. So the Legal Amazon Consortium is going to achieve this goal with surplus and we committed to new investments. We have this minimum commitment of enhancing 15% of the state budget so that these policies which exist, we have some policies in Pará, each state has a different policy. In uh, Amapá, we have the integrated uh, production plan that is working with some chains related to bioeconomy. But we also have ABC, 5 million for innovation, for investing jointly with some rating contracts, the states will commit to put 5 million in each one of the budgets for us to invest jointly in certifications and traceability projects that could uh, help the nine states. So we aim at achieving more and more. This clicker is not working well. Could you help me? And the idea is that we could structure at least one B, one billion in five years. But we also have different initiatives and opportunities. And to wrap up, I'd like to say that in this program, we have three components. After discussing with WRI, and MAPA and other partners. Next slide, please. We have three components here. We have this component on structuring the bioeconomy programs in each state. So the nine states are going to have specific programs for bioeconomy. We know that PARA is launching at COP its bioeconomy program, which is a reference to the other states, but each state is going to have their own. And we are going to have an innovation component with Embrapa and other state uh, research bodies. And the third component, which is the, evol the evolution of the ABC programs, things that we have in the different states, but we are going to, to improve. So 
the idea is to work from 2023 to 2027 in synergy with the environmental governance. And this last slide is about the next steps. So what is the idea? We should work not only with this COP agenda to incorporate this issue of dialogue and organization, integrating farming, forest, cattle raising, and also to capture in, in line with the partnership partners. And we have this fund to finance different initiatives. We have FOMBIO, another partner we've been presenting in the Rio Climate Fund, a proposal for raising finance for this project here of bioeconomy, and we can raise funds to accelerate this process. So we have also other agendas related to this topic, and we invite you to monitor this, this great program of the Legal Amazon Consortium. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Eduardo. As you've observed, the initiative of the Legal Amazon Consortium to structure this big economy where bioeconomy and the low carbon economy are integrated is very important. And for us to achieve these next steps, advancing, advancing in this process, we must find structuring solutions. So we have this guiding question on which structuring measures and public policies are necessary to enhance and advance the low carbon uh, agriculture to develop the, the farming process and cattle raising uh, process as well, and the sustainable development of the Amazon. So this is, uh, this is food for thought for our panel members, and I usually say when they invite me to discuss low carbon agriculture, that we have a great mission that is not to criminalize the productive activity. The trend we have is to criminalize the productive uh, activity. And it's not the case. We should maintain the productive activity with its process, and we should criminalize what is a crime not the activity itself. And in this, in the sense, Secretary Kleber Suárez from the Ministry of Agriculture, I would like to ask you to talk about the structuring measure that the federal government and the Ministry of Agriculture has been advancing. Because you have this, this, uh, this federal view for this process of developing the low carbon economy. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be here in this panel with uh, more strategic, a strategic panel with more strategic participants. I would like to answer Eugenio's question uh, on top of three perspectives. We are at a climate conference whose main purpose is the challenge of working towards climate security. Second of all, we live in a contemporary world and beyond the climate issues, we have two great challenges. The uh, energy security, which is the most innovative topic in terms of the news of the COP discussions and food safety. There is a sector that is highly vulnerable and it is a sector that can contribute the most to overcoming these challenges. The challenges of humankind and the contemporary world, uh, climate security, energy security, and food safety. The Ministry of Agriculture with other partners, and I would like to mention the consortium, who is a strong partner of ours in topics related to the sustainable development of livestock and agriculture in the Amazon. We have tried to um, 
establish great guidelines to show the production sector and the society the production inclusivity through decarbonizing practices. And our great policy, policy is the 10-year plan, the ABC plan. It's important to say that the ABC plan that we call APC Plus has been through 12 years promoting sustainable production. The product, the livestock and agriculture sectors in Brazil has taken the commitment of implementing at least 35 million, a million hectares of decarbonizing practices that, um, in fact, do reduction, mitigation, capture, sequestration of carbon through their production practices, like recover of pastures, integration between crops, livestock and forest through the biological fixation of nitrogen the legumes and vegetables produced in brazil use uh, biological fixation of nitrogen brazil is a big leader that has contribution to the production of fibers energy and the mitigation and sequestration of carbon the management of uh, waste and and uh, debris and the jets that come from animals. And the second goal of the ABC plan in the first cycle was mitigating at least 133 million tons of equivalent CO2. When Brazil announced the first sectoral plan for the livestock sector of mitigation and adaptation through livestock of the climate issues, we doubted ourselves. We from the livestock sector doubted ourselves and the livestock as a whole, not the governments or the state governments, all of our us actors of the agribusiness in Brazil in 10 years we have reached 60, 52 million hectares of um, planted forests, direct planting, which is an extremely sustainable practice, things that the United States is using nowadays. Brazil has been doing for a while. The Our producers, unfortunately are still not being paid for this and many other sustainable technologies in the livestock and agriculture sectors have mitigated over 60 million of equivalent carbon from 2010 to 2020 and the second cycle that is ongoing now that we called abc plus has the horizon between 2020 2020 and 2030 the goals of adaptation and mitigation for the livestock and agriculture sectors of Brazil is an, an economic sector that in Brazil that is very advanced in matters of adaptation of systems, inputs, and contributions to the climate change. With the livestock sector, we have projected a goal of 72 million hectare, uh, hectares of uh, decarbonizing agricultural systems, the intensive raising of cattle, smart irrigation systems with the efficient use of water, and we want to mitigate 1.1 billion tons of equivalent carbon. In the second cycle, the big news will be the decentralization of the program with the states. The states of the Amazon region that already put together their management council for the ABC plan, and they have advanced with figures that uh, surprise us positively. In a summary, these are the main contributions of the livestock and agricultural sectors have brought, not only for the mitigation and climate security, but also food safety and energy security as well. Thank you very much, Secretary. Thank you very much for the words. The Secretary is bringing to us a framework of public policies which represent the success case of agribusiness in Brazil. It dates back to the 1970s. 
And uh, there are some very clear components. First of them is the political decision of uh, creating a state perspective. The second one is the capacity building and the use of technologies. And the third one is the funding, the set of funding sources. And the fourth, of course, is the entrepreneurship of the Brazilian agricultural worker or the livestock worker and the development of the sector. And then, Danielle, uh, the secretary mentioned technologies, the uh, technological advancement of the uh, livestock process in Brazil, and Embrapa is the one responsible mostly for this process of development and advancement of the agribusiness in Brazil. So I would like to ask you how Embrapa has seen this development and which are the evolution processes that you identify for the Brazilian agriculture and livestock to be more and more transformed in this sector of a low, car low emission and for the development of the Amazon and Brazil as a whole. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Can I remove this table? I cannot speak while I'm not, uh, while I'm walking, uh, if I'm not walking. Good afternoon, everyone. Sira, where's Sira? Sira is there. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to try to use this to answer your question. It's a hard question. Now we're going to talk about the ABC plan, which is a science-based plan. Why is it a science-based plan? Does these minutes have to be considered and taken off my time? The Low carbon agriculture plan is science based. It is a public policy of MAPA, the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Supply, represented here by Dr. Klebe. This plan promotes sustainability in the field, but how? I think this clicker is not working, unfortunately. Third slide, please. Okay. Certo. E por que ele promove? It promotes sustainability because it encourages the producer to adopt those more sustainable policies. And this encouragement is increased when the producer sees that their production can be more sustainable or it could be more productive. And for all economic activity, what interests the producer are the economic gains. As Dr. Kleiber says, they can see it as an opportunity not only for their production, but uh, for them to retain those profits with the sales of their carbon credits. We have here some uh, practices like uh, pasture recovery, um, forest plantation, agroforestry systems. We also have treatment of animal waste that can be transformed into energy, for example, biofuels. We have biological control of pests and diseases, biological nitrogen fixation, and direct plant, plantation of forestry. And we have here the techniques. There are so many techniques, but we still have that big challenge, which is the decarbonization of our livestock. And how can that be done? By expanding scientific knowledge, science, disseminating techniques as well, because it's not only enough for us to produce this knowledge if we don't promote the adoption of those techniques, if we don't have the transfer of the technology. Only with the adoption, we're going to have innovation. It's not enough to have the knowledge if I don't promote this adoption of the techniques in the Brazilian livestock and agriculture. And how? With Embrapa. 
Embrapa is the technological branch of MAPA. Embrapa is a public company of livestock research that is directly related to the ministry, MAPA. MAPA uses Embrapa very little, I like to say. They have to use it more. We have to have this use, these public policies based on uh, science. Embrapa has its... Uh, technological plan planning based on the three principles of sustainability, the three pillars, social, with an economy, with an inclusive uh, livestock, with uh, not only productive livestock, but regenerative livestock and economic, because for all economic activities, there has to be profit generation, providing food not only for Brazil, but also providing the exports of those foods, generating income for our producers. The social balance of Embrapa, for every one real invested in 2021, there was a return of 23.38 reais for the Brazilian society. What is the other investment? What other investment that yields this? It is a good return, a good investment for the Brazilian livestock. And also within our strategic planning, we have an alignment with the 2030 agenda from the UN. So from the 169 targets of the 2030 agenda, with the goals of our strategic planning until 2030, we're going to contribute to 131 goals. Is it good? It's very good. Some examples of our actions, we have the carbon neutral beef. It is already there and on the shelves of the supermarket. It's a concept brand that ensures techniques that compensate the emission of carbon equivalent carbon in the atmosphere. It is a concept brand. Please look for it on the shelves of your nearby supermarket. We also have the low carbon soy. It is also a concept brand with sustainable practices for reducing CO2 and GHG emissions. And we want to expand it. We want to expand that concept for um, wheat, for fish, why not? Low carbon fish, and we need support for the by the private initiative. Embrapa doesn't sell. Embrapa needs a methodology called open innovation, which is a PPP to place these products in the market because Embrapa doesn't sell. But through a partner, Embrapa puts these products in the market and you are benefited. Embrapa pursues to incorporate new technologies and partnerships because, in fact, we need to become closer to the production sector. Only by doing this, we're going to get to know their growing pains and we're going to know how we're going to be able to solve those problems with new technologies, new partnerships, reaching the innovation for the Brazilian livestock and agriculture. We have several actions in the Amazon biome. If you are interested, please come talk to me and I will talk to all of those actions. I'll talk to you about all of those actions like bioeconomy, dissemination of sustainable practices and new low carbon technologies. And we have today 43 centers of research, not only the nine ones that are located in the Amazon, but we have 43 centers of research that are able to develop low carbon technologies. That's what I had to say to you. We are always expanding our partner networks. Here I see some of them, and I would like this network to increase more and more in favor of our sustainable agribusiness. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniele. Lots of information in a little time. Thank you very much. You were very objective. And in, as I said, Embrapa has this focus in the development of new technologies to develop more and more the Brazilian 
agriculture and cattle raising. And you develop, you talked about how these technologies reach the shelves of our consumers, the industry of processing and the production itself. And this production can reach what sec the secretary mentioned, which is the food safety, the different securities associated to agriculture and cattle raising. And when we talk about the structuring actions for the Brazilian agribusiness, we're not talking only about public policies and command and control. We're talking about how the initiatives of the private initiative, the private companies can contribute to the construction of these solutions. We would like to hear from you, the representative of the Brazilian beef, the representative of the industry, how you see those challenges and also how the industry can integrate and contribute to this process of sustainable development of the Brazilian agriculture and cattle raising. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone who is here. I would represent an industry of food, JBS, is the biggest company of food in the world, but the challenge is the same size as the company. I think we cannot forget we are here at a COP talking about the E, the S, and the G, but uh, we have to remember that the most important letter is the S, the people. The companies are made of people. The food that is produced in the field is produced by people. The families are there. There's always a person behind this production. I think the challenge and the company in the private sector has the challenge of taking this information to the field. If the produce, producer that is uh, there in the field doesn't want to do, we have to remember that the property is their house, where they live most of the times, where they raise their families. If this is not a choice of this producer to use that technology, we're not going to have any success in the shelves of on the shelves of the market. We're not going to deliver any product if we don't have this partnership with this producer. We have to give the right conditions for this producer to work. We don't want to criminalize the rural production. We have to understand that the topics that we approach here, like the deforestation, are uh, carried out by a minority. Most of the system, they try to survive off their production. We know that this minority is a minority that is committing a crime. And this crime has to be approached by criminalizing it and not by excluding the produ producers. What we have done is taking this regularization of their situations to the producers and with assistance of the states, we have implemented partnerships. The private initiative is in contact with those producers and accelerate the process of the state. We know that the governmental speed is different than the private speed, so why not make an integration so that we can take the speed of the private sector to the public initiative in a partnership? I think we have to work in a partnership. As I said, the S is the most important letter. We can only t get to 2030 and 2040 and 50 if we are all together, if we are working jointly. and. JBS has worked in this sense. Uh, there are some challenges. We have to talk about them. This is not ready. It's not over. We have to research. We have to work, but we have to do it together. This is a behavioral change. We have to understand this is not a competitive agenda. It's not about who's going to get to net zero first, and we have to get there together. I think this is the path that the private initiative has taken, and we have changed our mindset to get to take this to the field, attract the producers and the researchers and the government so that we can create a coalition and evolve in this process of decarbonization. We know that the field has several initiatives like the uh, regenerative livestock and the regenerative agriculture. Many producers already do this. The direct planting is already a very familiar practice in the Midwest of Brazil. In Brazil, we already have a low carbon 
uh, livestock. We know that most of our challenge is in the uh, planting of the earth, and we have to work on that in the next few years. Obrigado, Liege. Você, você é, da, tinha 1 um minuto e 40, então você bateu o recorde. <risos> o Bruno já está pedindo esse 1 um minuto e meio. É, obrigado pela, pelas considerações, como a gente comentou aqui. Thank you for your considerations. This integration of public policies, corporate policies, the action of civil society, science, academia to work to create the solutions. This is something paramount. We must have structuring solutions. We shouldn't have only pilot uh, products because we know the size of the Amazon challenge and the importance for the agribusiness. It's the main pillar of the Brazilian economy. And of course, no one is proposing to uh, to unbuild that pillar. We have to raise other pillars. But when we talk about structuring uh, fundamentals for uh, building that in our country, we are talking about many public policies. And the main one is the, the, the agrarian development of the country, the farming develop, development. So Bruno, one of the items that we discuss is when we are developing an economy in the Amazon, we must have the, the farming well-defined because this is a core uh, topic. How can we have real uh, financial security and also uh, credit, all the processes for this farming? So since you're coordinating this discussion group within the topic of land regulation with Horaima on what the pillars or development pillars are in terms of land regulation, what is Para bringing as an experience that can be disseminated to other states that is connected to development of the Brazilian farming? Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I'd like to thank the consortium for the invitation, for the opportunity to be here presenting to you not only uh, results, but uh, presenting this ABC policy, which is a strategic uh, policy, as Eugenio uh, mentioned. So I'd like to thank the president and also the governor of Valdez. And I'd like to thank you, Eduardo, on, on his behalf and all the team. Con congratulations. It's wonderful to have this room to dialogue with you. So what do we see in our daily life? I'm going to talk about the land issue, OK? We implement, implemented this pilot project to change the mindset to prove that that could work in the field, on the ground. It's an opportunity for the farmer, for the rural producer. But in the second phase, that is to scale this production, the farmer won't have resources because that engages technology, qualified labor. Otherwise, they will go back to that way of producing that is uh, the same way, the, the traditional way they learned with their parents and grandparents. So what do they need? They need resources. And then after it's implemented, they're going to reg regulate their land. So I need this document to take to the bank to get credit for this investment. So we understand that when we implement a pilot project of ABC, we must monitor this process of land regulation, especially in the Amazon due to the deficit we have concerning uh, land regulation. So you have this scenario, this challenging scenario in Pará. So what is the state government doing? What are you implementing? We created this panel with 10 strategic actions for implementing the new land regula regulation agenda in the state of Pará. Because it's, it's not only a matter of a law. 
I'm going to show you that it's not only a law. We have to structure the public service of uh, land regulation. We, and we must uh, uh, be fast because the economy moves fast. The public body is not structured to provide this public service. It's, uh, it won't work. So we have implemented 10 strategies. First, we designed the equipment, legal safety, land education, partnership. It's so important for the Amazon, the land issue. And we have we don't have a process for educating this land regulation. And my, in env the environment is so important that we have environmental education. The traffic is so important that we have traffic education. And land is so important for us to create this environment, this structured environment to implement bioeconomy, ABC, carbon market. And we don't talk about that. So it's, we, we are always postponing the problem and the problem is going to reemerge later on and they're going to blame the, the, the land bodies. So we have designed all these strategies, we've designed this model which is replicable and we are in direct partnership with Acri and Horaima as well. And I've separated three items to talk to you about, which are the organization and systematization of land data. This is urgent. And Interpa and SEMAS and the Secretariat of Environment and Emater partnered to create that because we, so we had a total mass and now we are organizing for strategic ends. So we put together these tactics to promote the land regulation, understanding the environment we are working with. So we have the management of processes and people. We have to organize internally. We have to work with management uh, towards and, and, and with this focus on land regulation because I must deliver results for the producer at the at the front front line, for the farmer who is waiting for that. So we have 23 points for checking to debunk the myth that this, these deeds are going to generate invasions. We have 23 points to check, to filter, to separate what is what is honest and what's not. It's not a matter of uh, inputting data on the computer and you're going to receive the certification, no. And we have to change the mindset of the public servants, generating empathy and humanizing the service. And the mindset starts changing because they see the service being done. And we talked about technology about production, innovation, needs. We are talking about this state-of-the-art agriculture, but we cannot have this regulation from the last century. We, that cannot be analogical. We, it cannot be artisanal. We must bring technology for that. That's why we developed our system for registering land that is called SICAFI. It's something innovative. We don't have something like that in Brazil. And we have efficiency. We have this internal module for management the processes. We have accessibility. We have artificial intelligence. We have different filters. So where do where can I ask for this, this land regula regulation. This is combating invasion. This is combating uh, dishonest deeds because we have the, the filters which are blocking and it's a replicable evo uh, evolutive and integrated module. So from this model, we were able to increase in almost 700% the number of individual deeds and 1700 in 2018 and 
we have reached more than 3,000 re uh, regulated areas, and we have increased the the traditional communities and the Quilombo communities, and we have benefited almost 4,000 families. And we were able to identify more than 4 million uh, and more than 4,311 square kilometers in regularized, in regularized, uh, reg, sorry, regulated uh, Quilombo and traditional communities. So we have the traditional communities uh, and it's the equivalent to two times the size of Luxembourg for you to understand the size of, of the work, four times the size of Hong Kong and six times the size of Bahrain. So this is the, the size of the challenge. Friends, this is the, the proposal. This process of structuring that will in directly impact the consolidation of the ABC in the Amazon. So here you may find a QR code if you want this presentation and more uh, information about what we've been developing, ETERPA. So you may also find a folder there. So thank you for the participation. Thank you, Bruno. It's always a pity that we don't have much time to discuss the different opportunities and solutions presented. But we've spoken about a strategy of the Legal Amazon Consortium in building these solutions. And then the secretary brought the set of state guidelines. There are state guidelines we have to think ahead. So he brought this set of guidelines bringing the development of farming in Brazil. Liege brought the contribution and how the private initiative is entering in the structuring solutions for the sector. And of course, with the technologies such as science and the development of capabilities that Embrapa is bringing. And nothing is possible if we don't have the legal certainty and environmental certainty to develop this process. Now we have five minutes for a brief Q&A with the participation of the audience. And if you want to ask direct questions, that would be great. Thank you. Congratulations for your presentations. I am Fernando Zembra. I am the 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 secret the the adjunct secretary in the Ministry of uh, the Agriculture. Everyone mentioned three important points that the Ministry of Agriculture is has put in its guideline for. Uh, for sustainable development in the beginning of 2019 when we launched uh, the set of guidelines based in on innovation and sustainable development land regulation and environmental issues and the productive inclusion of the family farming disseminating good practices and taking that to producers so it's interesting to see that despite we have different actors we are working together concerning sicafi congratulations on para's work and i wanted to know how this is dialoguing with sicar the system that is being developed on the federal level to analyze the the rural uh, register. Thank you. Do you have any other question? Any other comment? Congratulations on your on your presentation. This is Camila from Climate and Society Institute. I wanted to ask to Embrapa because you had this very interesting initiative. So I wanted to ask if within Embrapa or federal government, if you have this traceability system with the perspective to improve that to in the entire chain. We have time for a last question. Would you like to ask? Congratulations on your presentations. Very interesting. I wanted to ask to Liege, if you could talk to us, Liege, how in this net zero strategy, 
How do you intend to achieve scope number three, that is the supply chain with direct and indirect uh, activities? Bruno, uh, uh, we have a legal priority as uh, the governor Flavio Gina says. The priority is not favoring us in this reality, but that, that's okay, Isabel. We know that the greatest challenge is in scope three for companies, especially in Brazil, because we don't have this accountability concerning the land use within the scope three. So as I've mentioned, scope three doesn't depend only on the company. If you have a goal, if you're closer to the due date, if you didn't fulfill, you must just consider that party was, wasn't able to fulfill. So this is the tipping point. But the objective is to fulfill, of course. And as the private sector, we have a goal. And the objective is to achieve the goal and even uh, surpass the goal. So the strategy is that the community and the producers can have this transition. We had commercial effects such as China, which changed the, the cattle raise in Brazil from a moment when a, a country is remunerating this product with demand and they demand this cut date, this expiring date for this product, uh, 30 months for that animals. Of, so at the end, the cattle raising was able to invest in technology and get there. So we must do the same movement, not necessarily remunerating more, but in a way that we can make the producer understand that once they are able to produce more and more with more sustainability, they are going to produce more, um, a heavier animal, and they are going to be better remunerated. So this is a great pressure we do to incentivize and take this information to the field. It's not only the pro, uh, direct producer, but also the indirect producer. It's not the cattle raising is not a single pro, a producer for one uh, freezing company. We have the different producers until they get to the the rest of the chain. So we must understand the rest of the chain, link number one, zero, one, two, three, and engage the producers. And we need education on the ground, partnership with different bodies, unions, Embrapa with technology. But how can you reach that producer? How can we go to the settlement of that producer with three actors and three animals to explain what they have to do? That's where it have to go. So it's a joint strategy. We don't have a silver bullet. We don't have a button to push. We have challenges and we are working together with other actors, including Ima Florida, so that we can achieve and our goal that is being net zero until 2040. The United Nations have launched what net zero is. So we must disco discuss what this is going to be, what we are going to consider 10, 20 years of deforestation, 10, 5. So we are at this threshold of science and we are advancing for that. Thank you, Liege. Daniele, please. I'm going to add, if, you, if I may, Embrapa has a program for open innovation, and this program for open innovation can structure projects in partnership with small, middle, middle and big ones with, with social innovation. And we have exclusive uh, funds for social innovation. We have projects with in partnership with JBS, with the uh, productive uh, chain of Anima uh, fish in Pará with indigenous uh, people in Tocantins with Anima fish and also with producer of manioc as well. So we have uh, resources available. If you're interested, you can look for the unit in your state. And I, I won't be able to explain right now because I would uh, waste too much time. Concerning traceability, Embrapa has different initiatives and I'm going to mention fish because I am from the fishing farming and we need partnership for traceability. We suffered 
some embargoes, especially for Europe. We are not able to export fish to Europe due to lack of traceability. But we have an initiative with the company to start this partnership. But as I said, Embrapa cannot provide for the whole project. The partners have to uh, have a partner. This is called partnership. We are going to have a risk management because all researchers have risks. And we're going to have the operational costs shared with partners. This is not advancing, but if you're interested, we are going to have this partnership, especially to open markets for our fish. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, this question is about the integration of databases. ITEAPA works today with the partnership with the Environmental Secretariat. We look at the car we don't do the land regularization we just have a mechanism to uh, identify the minimum of those occupation the, the occupiers that are anonymous for us the seller settlers that are anonymous for us the state is already putting together the system to prepare it for integration the ccaf is integratable if it is state or federal, this is a matter of development, integration, cooperation, and make this integration. It's not only SICA, S-I-C-A-R. We have to integrate with the database from INCRA. This organization of the database is going to allow us to have more speed to uh, work with you. Without this organization of the database, it is more and more complex because if we don't have an initiative starting now we are already late for it this is going to make all the public policies this this accelerate and the data is going to be um taken uh to not going to be taken to another level so we're going to have to have an integration among the databases thank you very much everyone we having an afternoon of low carbon agriculture so we have today a moment secretary klebe to launch to announce actually an extension of a program I would like to thank our team because we're going to continue in this process. But I would like to thank Daniele, Bruno, Secretary Tavares. You're going to continue here with us, actually. Liege, thank you very much for your participation. A round of applause to our guests. And now, before passing the floor, to Secretary Klebe, I would like uh, Secretary Tavares for you to consolidate in one minute everything that you've heard here and how this contributes to this process of the plan that is being built in the in the consortium. Well, in one minute, I would like to talk about the partnership. We are seeing here a complex density and the complexity is the same size as our biome. We're talking about the biggest forest biome in the, in the planet with a series of logistical challenges, the challenges of uh, communication. This is a biome that somehow has a dispersed settlement this is, this is one of the challenges, and this is why it's very important for us to work in a network, work with synergy, and enjoy the maximum of uh, policy integration in all spheres. In the three spheres, we have a nation with three spheres that can work very well together. The Ministry of Agriculture and all of the federal policies that are paramount regional development policies, state policies, the policies and integrations that are developed in the uh, environment of the consortium. I have initiatives that belong to each state and each population that each population chose and policies that are shared. 
we have municipal policies chosen by the population. We have technology at our disposal, technologies that we didn't have a while ago. We are talking about blockchain now. Lavoura, pecuária. Talking about integration between the crops and the livestock. We're talking about satellite monitoring. So there are many things, many possibilities for us to uh, get to fostering and integration in our cell phones. So there are many things. I think we have many opportunities and possibilities. We leave here very happy because the program is dynamic. It is incorporating all of those collaborations, all of those contributions. So we're very happy to be able to count on all of this network in the elaboration of the pluriannual plans for 2023-2027. So thank you very much. We count on your uh, support for the development of the ABC plan in the Amazon. Thank you very much, Secretary. And as you said, this integration is paramount. Now let's pass the floor to Secretary Klebe. He is going to talk a little bit about the Rural Sustainable Program and how this program lands on the ground. How is this discussion in a on a climate conference, how is this discussion in the commercial relationships, and how this is going to be a public policy of incentive. I pass the floor to you, Secretary, so that you can uh, continue with the launch of the Sustainable Rural Program. Thank you very much, Eugenio, for the kindness of providing us with this space with the secret with secretary Eduardo of the consortium so that we can have a panel focused on the rural sustainable program but uh, first of all i would like to invite our panelists that are going to compose with me and with you this panel i would like to invite our colleague david santon saddington that represents the Embassy of the United Kingdom to make up this roundtable with us. Ms. Esperanza Gonzalez. Do we have her? No. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Alejandro Munoz. Alejandro is the Director of Internationalization of IABS, an important partner of ours. I don't know if we have already with us Secretary Mauro. Secretary Mauro, please. Mauro Almeida is a an environmental secretary of the state of Pará. And next, I would like to invite Secretary Marco. Marco Menezes Lagos. Is he with us? Marcos uh, is our Environmental Secretary of the State of Rondonia. Very well. This panel, my friend Eugenio, I would like to thank you once again for making this space available for us, this uh, panel. Uh, aims at open for the consortium, the announcement and the formalization, the symbolic formalization, because the official formalization was already carried out, and the announcement of the Sustainable Rural Program. It is a project, as the name itself says, that leads the sustainable development for the rural Amazon region, promoting sustainable production chain and decarbonizing production chains, and somehow contributing to the reduction of the pressure for deforestation in the Amazon region. 
UFS Amazonia, which is the name that we have attributed to this project, has a funding program for sustainability for from the United Kingdom under the financial management, global financial management at the IGB, which is one of our strategic partners, and the Brazilian management of EIDS, EIBS focused on the sustainable development of the Brazilian livestock. It is a project that has a horizon of the next five years. We're starting this project today, so it is going to be developed in the several states of the Amazon region for the next five years. Starting its first cycle in 2026, and. Uh, until 2027 with resource of 9.7 million dollars and to start here i would like to hear from our partners i would start by passing the floor to mr david saddington a sectoral specialist from the inter-american development bank idb so he can speak a little bit about the role of the projects in connection to the agenda of the bank and he's going to speak a little bit about the importance of the role of the project prs amazon amazonas David? Yes. Okay. I will repeat. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. UK. UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, check here. Uh, David uh, Sariton, perdão, é chefe uh, da cadeia de suprimentos sustentáveis do Reino Unido. David Sariton is the chief of the chain of sustainable production in the United Kingdom, and he is going to talk about the PR, PRS project in Amazonas. Today, and I think it is absolutely fantastic around how much focus there has been on food and agriculture at this COP, but this is a story which Brazil has known for, for many, many years. Um, and it is an absolute delight to be talking on the Sustainable Rural Programme today and the continuation of the UK government support uh, for this fantastic project in Brazil. We know how much a global challenge um, we face and how important agriculture is in meeting that global challenge. Uh, in Glasgow, we talked around halting and reversing deforestation by the end of the decade. Uh, we talk a lot around the emissions from agriculture, but in the sessions here today, we can actually see that there are very, very tangible ways of actually reducing emissions from agriculture while at the same time, which is a critical thing, at the same time having sustainable development. These are not things which are mutually exclusive anymore. Brazil is already proving this and we need to scale it up. And project finance, of course, is so, so important in meeting that challenge. Um, so very briefly, in terms of international climate finance and the sustainable rural program 84 million dollars will be distributed um, this of course again is the implementation cop and this is i think an absolutely fantastic signal that the money is going to the ground the money is going to the farmers who need to have be involved in this sustainable transition and and this program when i when i first sort of heard about this um the scale of it is absolutely enormous and i think that you know we need to remind european partners of this in particular when you talk around the geographies that this program is covering it is absolutely vast covering 21 percent of brazil over 250 cities you know this is a combined land mass of sort of uh you know about half of the european member states this is absolutely sort of fantastic the scale that this project operates over is is really really commendable because you're not just doing sort of wonderful things you're doing it at that catalytic level and i think that's so important and such a strong message to get out of this cop and phase one of course of the project has been uh running and in terms of phase 
two in terms of the benefits just to briefly sort of talk around this which should arrive in 2025 so the combined benefits of phase one and phase two those those benefits i mentioned of supporting the planet um first avoiding deforestation in 132,000 acres and enormous reductions in greenhouse gas emissions but crucially benefiting 35,000 people and improving the income from farmers by 25 percent which is absolutely wonderful and just a final uh point i i, I will make because i know we're very short on on time and, and lots of people have uh fantastic things to say about this you know the uk is is very humble to support this ongoing work in brazil through international climate finance and it very much represents rep uh represents that strengthening relationship we have and i do believe um uh, speaking on behalf of the uk's international forest unit that this piece of work um in brazil when we talk on forests and agriculture this really is critical and we need to see a lot more scale in this area over the coming years so thank you very much uh, I, I look forward to hearing more about uh, the program in its development and the uk is absolutely sort of yeah uh, yeah very, very humble to support this fantastic endeavor in Brazil. Thank you. Obrigada. Muito obrigado, uh, David. Thank uh, you very much, David, for your presence and for the support, for the very important support that the United Kingdom has given to the strategic development project in Brazil. For the strategic import that the uh, UK uh, provided for Brazil's sustainability. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, na sequência, agora sim, vamos ouvir a... Now, let's listen to Esperanza Gonzalez. Thank you very much, Esperanza. Esperanza is a sectoral specialist of the Inter-American Bank of Development, or IDB. IDB is a very important partner in several projects with the Brazilian states, not only the Ministry of Agriculture, but other ministries and states in Brazil, and she's going to speak about the role of the project of sustainable development in the con in connection and in the context of other funding projects of IDB. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. I'm going to try to speak in Portuguese. I think my Portuguese is a little bit rusty, but I'm going to make an effort. I'm very happy to be the only woman that is sitting here in the front I would like to tell you that the climate agenda of sustainability and biodiversity is very important for the IDB. For the IDB, it's a pleasure to support this initiative, the initiative of the Sustainable Rural Project, now focusing on Amazonia, the Amazon, where 44 municipalities will be prioritized and where we're going to implement projects in sustainable production chains. IDB believes that the cooperation is one of the main elements for the growth of the sustainable production and also for the generation and spread of knowledge and techniques. And that is why we're very happy to contribute to this initiative. Thank you very much to the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Supply for always being our partners. And thank you for the Brazilian government because we work with a lot more ministries than just the Agriculture Ministry. The Amazon is key for the IDB agenda. I would like to take this chance to tell you that recently, within the management of climate change and sustainability, we created the unit for Amazon. We created the Amazon unit as a response for the requirement of eight countries in the region, aiming at the effort focused on the promotion of climate action. This structured unit takes into consideration a theme approach and geographical approach. The theme areas that are priority of this unit are the human capital, and here I'm talking about health, employment and education, infrastructure and resilient cities, bioeconomy, and the sustainable management and agriculture, uh, cattle, and
and forestry. IDB are work, is working with the local communities, Afro communities, indigenous communities, and they are going to be the direct beneficiaries of these initiatives. So they are critical actors when we talk about the conservation of the territory of the Amazon. And it's very important to us to keep supporting this kind of initiative. So you asked me to be brief, so I wish you all success in the next phases of the project, and I hope that the, in the next meeting we can speak more about the project implementation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Esperanza. Most certainly we are going to have many meetings, not only with the technical area in the Ministry of Agriculture and in the technical part of our uh, partners, the different states and secretari secretariats. Now we are going to listen from Alejandro Munoz. Alejandro is the director of internationalization at uh, EABS, who is a partner in different projects, the Brazilian Institute for uh, the Sustainability. Let's talk about our initiatives. Thank you so much for being here. I'd like to thank all the partners of this project. Such an important project. And being brief, as a, an executive agency of this project, we consider key in this, pro, in this work that we are going to perform in the Amazon, we are going to work with productive chains and it's very important to work in the verticalization of the chains, the chains as a whole. The production and the previous sustainable projects work with production, and we are going to have this step ahead. We are going to work with all the links until the commercialization and opening of new markets, which are key. That's why we are working a lot to detect the weak links to strengthen them. And then we're going to have capacity building where we are going to include distance learning, master degrees, technical assistance, but advancing to the certification as well, to having a sustainable brand to open new markets. There's something very special about this project that we had as a lesson learned from previous projects is the strengthening of the social productive organization, working with the local. So once you add the, the project resources, it, it seems that the benefits will be finalized to the producer or extractor, extractors and but by strengthening the cooperatives, associations, traditional communities, indigenous peoples, we are leaving this legacy of sustainability in our action. So we are able to, to have a long-term benefit for, in this project. And lastly, I'd like to highlight that we, are, we expect a lot of dialogue among the different actors of the project. We tap into the state technical chambers, the state governance are very important in this role with all the groups, different ministries, and also with the local associations, cooperatives, there's a dialogue among all of them. And this is key for the success of this project. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alejandro. In this sequence, we are going to listen from two different states who are direct uh, beneficiaries of this program. I'd like to give the floor to the Secretary of Environment uh, of the state of Pará, Marcos Ojo Almeida. Kleber made a mistake in my name. It's Mauro Ojo Almeida. Good afternoon, everyone. As I was saying yesterday, we have 
many different Amazons in Pará, we have different Amazons as well, different biomes from the Amazon. But we have this special Amazon that is the occupied Amazon, the consolidated Amazon, that in this historic process of occupation in the state of Pará has settled in this in this farming activities with forest management as well. What we are seeing, this initiative that is coming from IDB, and we are very happy that to have this response from the IDB and the Ministry of Farming is this low carbon farming that must have synergy with the projects and programs that we have in the state. Especially in Pará, we have now this program called Sustainable Territories that is aiming at have this synergy with Sustainable Pará, AVC plan, to have the efficiency of the vocational productive chains, creating markets. And there's something which is more important that we need to connect this, this activity now with, the, with another one from the state of Pará. We recently launched what we call this sustainable territory platform, which is a platform connecting the private public initiatives and government initiatives which are happening in our territory so that we can map where we are contemplated, where we have gaps that we must bridge and where we must consolidate it. So it was a work done by many people supported by IPAN, TNC, and we estimate that this is a platform that will connect and put together all the different initiatives. So I'd like to thank you, congratulate IDB and Ministry of Agriculture for this initiative. And let's move on to gain scale markets so that it's not a, it's not a, a case by case project, but a, a continuous project that will transform our reality. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Secretary Mauro O. de Almeida. Then we are going to have the Secretary of Environment in the state of Rondônia, my friend Marcos Antonio de Menezes Lago. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a great honor to be here representing Rondônia for very important institutions. I'd like to thank the government of the United Kingdom, IDB, IPAN, such programs of sustainable development, they are very important because they observe the human being on the land. The development should consider the environment and the human being at the same time. And the low carbon culture helps helps us to maintain food safety and respecting the productive chains, improving the new productive chains so that they can be sustainable, serving the population as a whole, the population that we produce and consume. Hondonia will be a partner for a long time most certainly. I thank you for your presence and your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary Marco. We should listen to our great partner in this uh, movement of uh, Legal Amazon Consortium. Please. Dr. Kleber, on behalf of the Legal Amazon Consortium and our president, uh, Governor Valdez, I, the Secretary of Environment, I'd like to recognize that in the last COP in Glasgow, King Charles has received the governors and committed to this agenda. He would work with the funding of low, the low carbon actioning, the team. It's very good to see this real delivery here and at the Scott. This is the great commitment we must have. COP is a space and 
that is very important. So now we have the opportunity to listen from the, the governments from the Amazon, and we're happy to receive such an announcement from the United Kingdom with wonderful partners, IDB, for instance. I, uh, IAP, MAP, and besides the discourses, the deliveries for us to enable this migration so that we can implement this low carbon economy, this green economy in the Amazon is something real happening. So concerning the Legal Amazon Consortium, we thank you so much. We see many synergies. This is the right word. With the program we are structuring in this cons consortium of bioeconomy and also low carbon economy, so I invite you to to advance this conversation, including other partners with this blended finance with other sources. So I hope that you are inspired by the United Kingdom. And so please receive our, our gratitude from the Legal Amazon Consortium. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eduardo, for your words. Actions like this one, although we are celebrating here, but uh, and launching in reality, the works started, we are We've been led by IAS with the help of the United Ki United Kingdom. All the combination, all the operation with the IDB and the United Kingdom partners. We have other programs with IDB, with the Cerrado and Caatinga, which are much more advanced with concrete and practical actions. But I should inform you that this program is aiming at the sustainable development of a biome that is important not only for Brazil, but for the world. And concrete actions like this one, more than developing, producing chains beyond sustainability for the, the world is generating income and life quality for the Amazon peoples and the productive chain. From, uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture, I, I, I would like to thank you all, and I give the floor to our host, Eugenio, for the final words. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take your seats because we will move on with our discussion of low carbon farming. We will have a new group taking their seats here to move on this discussion. And I'd like to call José Carlos, please. Thank you, José Carlos. José Carlos is taking over as, a, as the moderator, and I'm going to watch, okay, José Carlos? The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Eugenio. Do you do you hear me? Parabéns aos panelistas da primeira sessão. Vou assumir aqui meu meu lugarzinho para tentar. And I'm going to take the seat to compose this table for the second session. <laughs> 